Hello, my name is Paolo Pescatori. I work at CCS Insight. I lead our research in the area of multiplay and media. That includes all things to do with telcos and web companies moving into the area specifically around video. I'm here at the Eurocom's OTT Digital Content Seminar to talk about some of the key trends that we're seeing in the marketplace and our key predictions that lies ahead over the next 12 to 18 months. I lead research at CCS Insight in what we call multiplay and media. Multiplay because we see the future being bundles of things. You know, you probably have been accustomed to hearing triple and quad play. And media, things like video, games, music, but I guess a lot of my time is being spent on video right now, helping C-level executives make sense of the connected world and formulate strategies around launching uh, video in this, in this area to compete with, with Netflix. So my remit here today is very much to talk about some of the key trends we're seeing in the marketplace as well as some of our predictions. A lot of the predictions I'm going to be talking about are from the event that we hosted uh, at the end of last year, but I still believe they're very, very relevant. And we have an event uh, next month to talk about our own predictions for next year and beyond. If you're interested, it's November the 18th. Feel free to drop me an email or you can reach me on Twitter at Paolo Pescatori. So, I think it's important to say, before we deep dive into the area of multiplay, there are a number of areas that are really, really hot from the telco domain. Internet of Things, which is usually complex and fragmented in nature, includes areas such as the connected home, connected car, M2M, and wearables as well, where there's a lot of hype right now, but obviously a lot of hope as well that it will succeed. And then, of course, the enterprise as well. We're seeing a lot of renewed interest in that area as well. But on my first slide, no presentation is com uh, complete in the area of OTT without talking about Netflix. So let's go straight into it. And everyone is jumping on the Netflix bandwagon, and it's very clear to see why. The company has demonstrated a strong appetite for its service. You know, they've amassed more than 65 million subs globally. And more importantly, most of these subs are paying for the video service. This represents a significant opportunity for telcos and other web brands alike. You know, it's astonishing to think even the likes of YouTube that have more than a billion viewers who access its site every month doesn't have a paid for video service. In our opinion, we firmly believe telcos have the extensive assets to offer a video service. Right now, they feel very much threatened by Netflix arrival, hence why many have decided to forge deals with Netflix directly. But we feel Netflix is, is a good partner for now. They have paved the way for others. And that's more important because they're able to right now, as uh, Emma's comment, which I agree with, certainly in the short term, you can actually help to sell fixed line and mobile connections. Unlike in the US, here in Europe, we haven't seen a profound negative effect on subscribers. But what's not clear is whether people have downgraded their pay TV packages. And that's what we expect has actually happened here in Europe so far, and specifically here in the, here in the UK. People are saying, do I really need the movies bundle? Do I really need the entertainment bundle? And they've downgraded that. It hasn't come through in the subscriber numbers, because if you look at Sky's base, it's continued to grow. But that includes the DTH service as well as their now TV IP box, which I suspect that's the part which is growing the most. However, what is clear that Netflix is on course to be the first truly European pay TV provider, an accolade earned within a short period of time, now present in more than 10 countries, and that accolade has already been achieved uh, in the Americas, in, in the US, Canada, and of course Latin America. The principal obstacles, you know, still remain. Being able to achieve the target, which is something like 130 countries within the next two years, being able to launch in those countries, being able to secure those rights in those countries, and being able to be profitable in each of those uh, countries very, very quickly. Looking at this slide, it's very clear the future growth lies in international expansion. But we firmly believe Netflix is a takeover target. This was one of our predictions from last year. We still firmly believe it, and all web players are looking to gain a stronger presence in paid-for video. You know, a tie-up for Netflix would make 
extremely good sense for them because it gives them the stability and gives them the power and the clout to be able to launch in multiple territories. And for a web player such as Google or Alibaba, it allows them to have access to a strong paid for video base, but also Netflix growing attractive portfolio of original content. We shouldn't dismiss the potential opportunity for Apple to come in and buy Netflix as well, given the moves that they've made in, in music. So that, would, that has a lot of legs. Another prediction that we have in the video uh, space is that web players from the East launch homegrown video services in the West during 2015. Video is a battleground for many of the web companies right now. The Eastern counterparts follow suit by launching homegrown content in the West. For many expatriates, it's very, very difficult to get access to the content from their home country. My origins are Italian. I have to spend £600 on a set-up box and a satellite dish to be able to get Rai and the Mediaset channel. Now Mediaset have decided to block their channels uh, uh, due to a failed uh, agreement with Sky, which has meant I have to fork out another £120 to buy a TV sat box. Ludicrous. Just deliver the services via IP. That's the way to go. You know, there will be lots of people willing to spend anything between five to 20, 20 pounds for that type of, of content. So equally as well, many of these Eastern players will acquire the content in Western world to actually export back um, or import into China as well. In fact, there's a company called LETV, a Chinese hardware manufacturer, is is, is planning to do this in the US this year as well. Uh, another key trend that we've seen uh, over the last uh, year or so has been the resurgence in the set-top box, very much driven by small form factor um, devices. Many web brands have launched their own as part of their efforts to get into the video uh, landscape. And the pace has changed in this area has been remarkable over the last couple of years. You know, if you think about you know, the traditional Sky or your cable set-top box being this big, moving to something which I have in my pocket, the Google Chromecast, which is quite small, I don't always carry a dongle in my pocket, but it's just to show it off to everyone if, if you're not familiar with it. And for those that aren't familiar with, with it, you know, this is just plugs into the HDMI port on the back, and you can control the service from your phone and cast or stream services onto the big screen. And in the case of the Amazon Fire TV, you just plug it into the internet, off you go, and you can use voice UI via the remote. And they've really simplified the, the UI. Their popularity is very, very clear to see. We now we see, you know, Google have introduced the, the, the second generation Chromecast. Amazon have followed suit with Fire TV with 4K and obviously the new Fire TV stick. Attractive low price point, you know, this, this retails for around 25, 30 pound. It's a no-brainer. Second of all, they've got, it's got the content people want on demand, such as Netflix, catch-up TV, as well as premium live TV sports, such as Now TV, as well as BT Sport. And they succeeded where a lot of the connected TV, smart TV um, uh, devices have failed due to the complexity and proprietary nature of a lot of the, uh, of the TV apps. I spent four or £500 on one of the latest and greatest TV uh, sets purely because I wanted to access Netflix and iPlay and YouTube on my TV. I don't believe I've ever brought up the smart TV uh, portal on my TV at all. I just now use this exclusively. In fact, interest in TV apps have absolutely dwindled. But it's great for the content owner. They're able to reach new audiences. And it's great for users because they are not tied into lengthy contracts and they've got the content that they want. We firmly believe that the future delivering video is all IP. And that brings me on to one of our other predictions in that the traditional set-top boxes become virtual. Dongles have provided some early disruption in this area and companies like Magin to offer truly TV everywhere services raises a question why service providers have to go down the route of supporting set-top boxes. They're costly, they, don't, they have to subsidise them and they're very, very clunky. We believe the future of delivering TV everywhere services on behalf of the telcos is around software-defined networks, virtualization, and more cost-efficient routers. I should have asked everyone with a raise of hands whether they agreed, but I've already gone through a couple of them. We can wait until the end of the day or hear the criticism on Twitter. Um, one of the other key trends that we've seen is the slew of corporate activity 
and many of them are now highlighted on this slide here, just a selection of those. And most of the deals are very, very much focused on the telco, strengthening their presence either in broadband or in content. You can see some of the examples on the broadband side, Orange, Jazztel, Vodafone, Ono, you've got the Charter Time Warner cable acquisition in the US, which is a very recent phenomenon, but also the content related deals stand out quite a bit as well, and specifically Telefonica's acquisition in Spain of Canal Plu, and they've been following BT's lead here in the UK of strengthening their presence in the area of, of content. Obviously, the importance of content to cable providers, such as Liberty Global, buying all free media in conjunction with Discovery Communications. You know, it's incredible to think, just these deals alone, just this selection, you know, have generated almost $180 billion in terms of transactional value. And, you know, we predict many, many more. And I'll come, up, I'll come to one very, very shortly. But before I do, it's all about the operators being well prepared to take uh, advantage of the opportunity that exists in what we call multiplay. And as I said earlier, you know, very much right now, it's all about triple and quad play, you know, bundling three <coughs> services and four services. But we believe the future is all about multiplay. You know, we've seen early signs already in the US of telcos bundling connected car, connected car, connected home, home automation services. So we're going to see even bigger bundles of things, five, six, seven services. And we've already seen Telefonica in Spain launch the first um, five service bundle. And it won't be long before other telcos follow suit. And they're very, very well placed in that area. Two areas that still need to be addressed tariffs and retail. On the tariff side, it's very much adding on services like mobile or video. We have yet to see the first truly converged bundle in the marketplace. So that needs to be addressed. There have been uh, some issues with pricing and Virgin Media have done a really good example of really bundling services with the Big Daddy and the Big Kahuna. EE have taken an innovative approach to convergence. Any mobile customer taken up fixed line broadband service gets a boost in their data allowance of 10 gig, which is quite novel and compelling to users. <coughs> Retail needs to fundamentally change. When you're moving towards a world of selling more than four, four or five services, particularly around the connected home, you need to effectively articulate that value to uh, customers, hence why the importance of owning a retail presence is going to be fundamentally important. Better move on quickly then. <laughs> that was my a wake up call. <laughs> so with that in mind, that takes me on to my, my next prediction, which I feel extremely passionate about. Here we go. Vodafone acquires Sky. Even throughout all of the discussions that have been ongoing since around June of Vodafone and Liberty Global around the asset swap, we still firmly believed that the, the strategic move for Vodafone would be to go after Sky. And particularly here in the UK, where Vodafone has just launched broadband and moving into TV, we're in a world where you're trying to differentiate and multiplay, it's hard to do that beyond price alone unless you've got the exclusive content. And Sky has that in abundance. So here in the UK, it makes strategic sense. Also in broadband, Sky is the number two player and they're giving BT a run for its money. Equally in Germany and Italy, Vodafone has broadband and mobile assets and they could strongly complement that through uh, Sky's pay TV assets in both of those countries. I won't linger on, I could spend an, aisle, an hour on this slide and I can talk about the various permutations in the UK, in Italy, in Germany, but in the interest of time, I'll move on, but I'm happy to come in and spend a bit more time. But I firmly believe in it. The challenging block, the biggest challenge of this is, is Murdoch and the valuation that, uh, that the family have put on, on, on Sky. But I think for Vodafone, this would be a, a really lucrative asset for it to buy. Anyway, in the area of video, we firmly believe that now we are now moving into a golden age of TV distribution. It's a perfect time to be a content and media owner, given that everyone is moving in the area of video. You can see the various channels to market now. 
You pre pre previously had the pay TV guys, the telcos are moving into that area. You've got the web guys who are increasingly looking to strengthen their own presence. Netflix has shown a way for others to follow. And now you even have the content owners now going directly. Even the likes of the BBC are commissioning shows and making them exclusively available online, following in the footsteps of Netflix. You know, even Amazon are investing heavily and now they're moving into theatrical production by making movies available uh, in the theatre and then making them also available immediately straight afterwards onto the, the TV set. But fundamentally, many of these companies have deep pockets. I believe we'll come to a point in time, some of these companies will invest in linear TV content and that really will disrupt the TV business. You know, clearly people have more choice, they, ha they own a slew of devices and they want to watch all of this stuff across different screens. However, there's a monumental challenge in making that user's experience consistent across those screens. It's no easy feat. Once they've mastered that, we firmly believe the battle is on personalization. The average number of connected devices per smartphone owner continues to increase. You know, most of those devices, if you think about it, the setup, mobile phone is personal, a tablet is being shared in the house, and a connected TV is used by everyone. We believe that the future of delivering TV, particularly for a telco, is to offer that service into the home and have individual accounts per user. Netflix has already paved the way by moving down that route. I want to go into, I want to be able to walk into my living room. The TV then knows it's Paolo. He loves Formula One. He loves football, and it comes on automatically for me. When the missus comes in, it's EastEnders. That's the video, or whatever the shared, uh, shared account is for the two of us. And for the kids, then it's Peppa Pig or Mickey Mouse Clubhouse or whatever the case may be. But this opens up a new revenue stream for, for the carriers. They've got the network assets in place to do that. And my last prediction, quite a ballsy one from a couple of years ago, several European free-to-air broadcasters will go out of business by 2018. And you know, we've already discussed that behavioural patterns have changed quite considerably over the last couple of years. And we believe some broadcasters have failed to jump on the bandwagon. They've tried to launch into digital, but they have failed to make the connection with users and they do not know who those users are. Most users have flocked to alternative sources, such as the Amazons and Netflix and the YouTubes. And we see a point that even some flagship shows, like X Factor, that's experiencing declining audiences, will eventually end up on the likes of Amazon and Netflix that yield higher advertising returns than the traditional broadcasters. And we believe that will be the final straw for many of these broadcasts, some of which are, are struggling already to a large degree. And also they faced a cap capacity crunch as well with more spectrum being made available to mobile operators. And given that they need that spectrum to be able to deliver high quality video, particularly 4K, is extremely challenging. And many telcos are now taking the lead with 4K distribution. And on a lighter note, here are some of our predictions that have come true. I won't spend too much time on them, but you know, particularly Free Buys O2, BT Buys uh, EE, and Google with, with plans to launch a uh, subscription VOD services. And just in case you're wondering, here are the lottery numbers for this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture, use them just in case. <laughs> anyway, on my last slide, you know, I don't want to elaborate or regurgitate what I've said, but certainly we've seen a slew of corporate activity amongst telcos. We're now seeing that moving to the media landscape and also in the supply chain as well. And we're, seeing much, we're going to see a lot more moving forward over the next 12 to 24 months. I was just talking earlier outside. I think the US is now prime for a major reorganization of assets, and we're now moving to a point where scale is becoming important. And as part of that, content is an important differentiator beyond price alone. Futures, uh, the future of delivering video is all around IP delivery, there's no doubt about that. And we firmly believe that telcos are well positioned. Whether they're willing to move at web speed is a different story. Hence why the web providers ultimately will win that race. And that's very much driven by Netflix and the, the role that they've played in the marketplace. However, what is clear that 
video is the cause is the wrecking ball uh, will cause a wrecking ball effect of the telco networks. So I think telcos need to really be prepared in terms of com compression and optimizing video delivery over their networks. Hence why IP throughout the network is important and having a vertically integrated approach to connectivity uh, is important and paramount. Hence why the BT acquisition of EE is so much important. And on that note, um, thank you very much for your time. I hope it's been useful. I could spend a lot more talking about the predictions that might happen over the next 12 months, but come to our event on the 18th of November and you'll hear more about that. Thank you. Thank you.